Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning April 27th, 2020. Uh, before I get into the message here, I do want to talk about personal readings. Um, yes, they're still available if that's what you want right now. It's up to you. Whatever makes you feel comforted, whatever will help raise your frequency, okay? And that's what the readings are about. So it's not a mind game anymore. It's not... Um, dazzle me, <laughs> right? The readings are meant to help you connect into your heart space, to have your revelations, bring things up to the surface that you can look at and process and move through and open your heart, as I said, and start being in more of a love frequency. Okay. Now that does not mean that in the personal readings that I give that I'm going to sugarcoat things or that I'm going to tiptoe around things. That's not a loving action towards you. Now, I'm not mean. I'm not mean. <laughs> there are probably some people out there who disagree, but that's just because they came with their expectations. They expected to be coddled and I didn't do it and that made them mad. And so they, you know, shoot back or whatever. But that uh, that's few and far between. The readings are there to help you get into a higher, I don't want to say higher consciousness, expanded consciousness. The consciousness isn't above you. It's already within you waiting to come on out and wake up. Right. So I just wanted to make that very clear. Of course, you can go to my website, angelsouls444.com. So if you want to do that, you can just go to my website. Now, the message. I will try to be as concise as I can be. Division, uh, toxicity coming up to the surface. A lot of humans still hitting through their pain body, um, hitting through a pain wall. This is something that if you've ever gone through or experienced abuse, for example, um, when you start to recover, one of the first things that starts to happen is maybe resentment that it's ever happened at all, um, or just anger, you know what I'm saying? And the whole idea here is to get into our hearts and get into more of a love frequency an authentic love frequency. You cannot fool the universe. Can't go around with a, a fake smile on your face and go, I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't really feel it, right? The vibration is always going to be matching. So, you know, this is going to be a time where things, I think is going to continue. And of course, my love to every single one of you out there. I know we're all in this together. Some people are having very uh, just unbelievable experiences and others are still kind of feeling like they're in a fog and I don't know what to do. I need to be grounded. But we're also seeing a lot of societal shortcomings, Mm -hmm. A lot of societal shortcomings and people are, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, right where the energy is, uh, we're, we're going to probably see another surge of this coming. Um, why? Because people are still more worried about sitting at a bar and having a drink than spending time at home. Um, you know, people are still behind their agendas. People are still, you know, yes, there's a lot of beautiful stuff going on. But I'm going to tell you a lot of the supposed positive stories that are getting put out there, they feel really fake. They feel really contrived. I'm just laying it out there. Uh, I'm not saying that it's, I, I don't know. <laughs> it just feels very like the story is very manipulated for it to be a feel good story. Um, there, like one, forgive this example, but there was one from a while ago where it was like uh, someone wanted to run a marathon and they weren't going to do it anymore, obviously, because everybody's on top of one another. And for whatever reason, this person f didn't feel like they could run in their neighborhood. So they ran back and forth on their balcony, which was meant to be an inspirational story. And the message being, you can find a way around anything. I love that message. I'm on that message ship with y'all. Okay. <laughs> like that part I love, but there was this underlying feeling behind it where it was like, did you really go into this person's home and film them running back and forth on their balcony? What, why, 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 why? You know, you could have just said, you know, I found a way and I hope all of us neighbors can do that too. And then I couldn't help but feel bad for the neighbors who had to hear his, you know, shoes going across that balcony. And I guess he went for like hours. I mean, God bless him. God bless him. But what I'm getting at is that whole story and how it's being presented to us is this weird, um, I'm going to be careful with what words I use here. But it's sort of like, you know, you get slapped and then it's like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, kind of thing. So here's all this flood of negative news, 
take things seriously, guys. Err on the side of caution. You know, let let history play out. But <laughs> better to be safe, okay? Better to be safe. Um, but there's all this like sort of negativity coming at us, and then here's this supposed positive story, <sighs> right? Um, I don't know. I, if I thought about, it, I could probably think of lots of other examples of like this you know, putting, putting people on a pedestal and stuff. And it's just like, okay, you know what? Like, <laughs> I, I, I could tell you that my father, um, drives a truck for delivery medical supplies and he, uh, is putting himself in danger by still going to work every day. Just like everybody who's on the front line of this, you know, grocery store workers and manufacturers and, uh, you know, ER doctors and nurses and, you know, the first responders like police and fire, uh, firefighters and things like that. Um, but then there are some other weird categories of people that they're not on the front lines and yet everyone's like, oh, poor you, because you're the only one experiencing joblessness right now. Like, that's what I'm getting at here. So there's a lot of manipulating our emotions. <laughs> Welcome to the world, Michelle. That's been going on. <laughs> I know, I, I didn't just figure this out, but you know, what I'm getting at here is that that's going to be coming up to the surface and that's going to become so obvious about how we have been manipulated. Now, some people want to take that and they'll twist it and they start going off in a whole other direction that's not balanced, right? Or they want to start pushing their agenda. They want to use that to push their agenda. It's, it, you can't fool the universe, okay? The universe knows what you're up to, yes? What is the universe going to respond to? Your energy. So you got to make sure that your energy is in a good place. Well, this can be very, very challenging. If any of you out there are experiencing this for yourself right now, my love to you, my love to you, my love to you, my love to you, okay? And if you can find the love in that and all of that and keep as best you can breathing into that, that's, that's going to help a lot, okay? And for those of us out there who you know, we're just kind of sitting on the edge of this going, oh, okay, I'm ready to act whenever I'm needed in whatever way I can help. I don't know, <laughs> you know, for the rest of us, the way that we can all help and get us not only through this situation, but to help us get into um, a better humanity, a, a better way where we live in a space of love and compassion. And, you know, we, we don't want to harm one another and any entities, beings, energies, like whatever you, however you see that, that do want to come in and cause harm, there's a dismantling of their structure and their food supply is cut off. And we can reclaim ourselves. We can get back to who we actually are. Very, very funny as I'm saying that, all this commotion is going on underneath me. I've been trying to record this. I don't know if this is like take four or five. Every time I get to this point, something happens to try to <laughs> quiet it. But it, it, it's not new. This is not new. People know about this. But the message here is that no matter what is going on, you need to be connected into your heart. Now, there are a lot of people who are acting out right now. They're acting out. And I'm not even talking about the ones that are on the TV that you're maybe getting upset over or, you know, whatever, whatever your reaction is to that. I'm talking about little bits of evil. <sighs> How do I put this? Um, people becoming more and more puppets of evil. And they're giving into that. Maybe because they don't think they're worthy of love. Maybe because... I don't know. There's just this disconnect of they, they left too much space to be filled up by a low frequency. There's a lot of judgment. Now, everybody has their purpose on this earth. Everybody showed up for a reason. Some spiritual practitioners are in the love and light thing. As long as it's authentic, that's beautiful. Okay? Unfortunately, there's not... There are people who want to help in that way, but they haven't gone through that journey in the heart space to get there. Then there are others that fall, maybe in the category, I've probably fallen into this category, of the reflectors. Uh, we often get judged as being negative. We get judged as, um, you know, don't rock the boat kind of thing. Like you're a troublemaker because you spoke up, but it's our job. <laughs> it's our job. Now, I think as we go through this, there will be things, and there's varying degrees of that. Um, but as we get through this, a lot of us are going to be free. 
we're going to start learning. We don't have to give in to what we have been conditioned to think. We don't, we can change that now. If somebody comes and is hateful towards me and maybe, I don't know, they're just doing whatever just to drag me down. I don't have to engage in that, right? Now, some of you out there are going to be like, Michelle, if you were truly spiritual, okay, already we got some problems here, right? But, (laughs) you know, Michelle, I've always known that. There's not a person on this earth that's ever known that before. Nope. Been telling yourself that. I know. (laughs) because I'm there with you (laughs) because I would tell myself like man you know can't engage in everything like yeah there's like that whistleblower kind of thing like sometimes in certain situations we have to bring them up you know for us to be aware of them and so we're not just sleeping through horrible things happening right bringing it to the surface to look at but they're saying right now this is a time that no one has experienced no one has truly experienced yet what it is to fully, that's that's the key word, to fully remember yourself. Because we have been, they're using the word domination. We've been under this sort of uh, domination (sighs) shock, like shock waves. You know what it feels like? Like I'm getting this image of like electrode, like someone forced on a table and like electrodes being put on them and they're just getting jolted jolted, jolted, jolted until they're in complete submission of like, okay, okay, I'll do whatever you say. Just make it stop. So in a weird way, humanity has sort of been tortured into going along. And this is why people get so uh, scared when anybody starts talking about things because there's this trauma there of Shh, don't rock the boat or else, or else what? I don't know. Something bad will happen. Who says? I remember somewhere deep in me that something bad could happen if we speak up. And they're not maybe 100% wrong. But we're coming into a place where we have the power to change that now. Where we're remembering love. Now that seems, I think for some people, a little oversimplistic. The solution of love seems overly simplistic. So much so that people will dismiss that. Or they'll dismiss it as airy-fairy, woo-woo. That's got to stop. That's just got to stop. I mean... You guys, this whole thing that's going on right now has been called out and predicted by people in this community, okay? And it's here. Are you still going to be in the place of, oh, that's just a bunch of blah, 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 blah? Are you interested in playing the fool? I'm not, okay? (laughs) I'm not going to keep pretending like stuff isn't happening when it is, okay? So... Love is going to be our answer here. And this is what every, you know, um, master, you know, spiritual master who's come onto this earth or, you know, whatever, whatever your belief system is, that's what they've always been trying to teach us. That is our expanded consciousness is coming into the love frequency. Now, there's something that we're going to have to be deconditioned have to go through some deconditioning to get through and that is what you think love looks like people are scoffing and laughing at home because I have a lot of people who are they're of that dark energy and they track that's what they're doing they're tracking this this video and my energy and all that stuff Um, but even when I have set a boundary with someone it's because historically I never set boundaries And it's because I know that there are people out there who are being quiet, who also don't know how to set a boundary or don't feel like they can or feel like they they have to give into this conditioning that, well, I have to play into because those are the people in power. So I have to play into what they say, whether it's your boss or a domineering kind of nasty friend, um, a love partner, you know, whatever. So I try to set an example. I'm aware that I'm being watched. That's why I do it. I do it out of love. And my heart goes out, especially to people who are currently experiencing what I've experienced in the past. And yeah, I feel a responsibility to them. I do want to look out for them. And maybe it doesn't make sense to people on the surface. But if you're connected into your heart, 
you'll feel me. You'll feel other people. You will feel their intentions. This is imperative right now because when you feel people's intentions, you know that that person who's like, everyone just describes them as, oh, she's such a sweetheart. He's such a sweetheart. They're not. Not always, uh, case by case, okay? I'm not saying, <laughs> don't go after the nice people who are actually genuinely nice, you know? But you'll start to have a better gauge. And eventually, again, toxic people won't get to just tell you what you want to hear and you give in anymore. You're not even a match for them anymore. So what I'm getting at here is that don't feel bad. Do not feel guilty. Don't feel like, oh gosh, so I'm not spiritually advanced. Darlings, all you darlings out there, <laughs> this is what we have all been working towards. Okay? This is all right. It's good. It's freedom. There's freedom in love. There is freedom in not blaming yourself and going, I'm such an idiot. Why didn't I realize that a long time ago? It's just not where we were. Remember, we're a collective energy. So even if you're trying to get going in this direction, the collective, you know, something's going to start happening in the world that takes your focus because we are one. The good news in we are one is that we have the power of good ready to ignite in us at any given moment. What, what do you want to feed now? If you're listening to me and you think this is ridiculous and you're judging and you're trying to twist what I'm saying or whatever, you're feeding the darkness. It's as simple as that. You don't have to agree with me. You can lovingly dis, uh, uh, disagree with me, but, you know, there's a difference there. There's a lot to talk about here, <laughs> but I don't want to make this too long. But the whole idea here is that if we're going to evolve, we, we would need to get into the space of not seeing someone as competition. Not living on the defensive. That's a big one that I've really had to learn to get through. Not living um, in a way where I expect to be harmed right? Because that what you all know what happens, it draws in people who do want to harm you, it draws in the darkness, because it feeds your fear. Um, you know, being afraid of your future. This is a big one they're saying, yeah, don't be afraid of the future. Because we are reconstructing our future right now. So if you're not home in the present, if the moment isn't right now, if you're not here right here right now with the breath, okay, <laughs> who's man in the ship, right? If you're too much in the future, too much in the past, What's happening here? Okay, does this make sense? I hope it does. I know it, what it is, is it's such a deep, big topic and I'm trying to do it in a, this isn't gonna be a quick video because it's not a quick topic, <laughs> right? Um, but we could really go into a lot of different details around that. Stop being fooled. Uh, make sure you're plugged into your heart space in every moment, not just in meditation. If you start to feel anxious, ask yourself, why am I feeling? Because there's just so much going on in the world. That's not a good enough answer anymore. There's always been stuff going on in the world. Why now? Well, because this is like some creepy little thing that could just like live on anything and jump out at you and get you. You know, I mean, I trust, trust and believe. I'm in there with you. Like this, this is weird. This is, this, yeah, it's creepy. But, but why is it here? So this isn't asking you necessarily to overanalyze. It doesn't have to go into a deep intellectual discussion about that. In your heart space, what does your heart wisdom tell you? It's teaching us priorities. It's literally shutting the door on our fog. It's, it's that routine that you get into, that thing that you love so much. <sighs> that you're, you're fighting to get back to, number one, it's not gonna be there anymore, so give it up. It's not there anymore, give it up. There's something better, okay? <laughs> Let the old go so the new could come in, all right? But this whole thing has literally shut the door on our routine and made us, it forced us to start to look at another way of doing things. Or again, what are the priorities? And anybody's gonna be a little cranky if they're being forced to wake up. Think about all the times someone has come in and tried to wake you up before you were ready, right? <laughs> so you are going to experience that crankiness, that irritability. Um, your energy and your frequency is changing, okay? And I promise you guys, I promise you, if you get into your heart and then you walk outside your door, if you're allowed to, I, everyone has different rules, I think, right now or different timelines and things. Where I live, I'm allowed to walk outside. And, you know, go for a walk in my neighborhood is what I'm getting at. So 
I, I can go outside and I find that, uh, you know, people do kind of look over and wave. There are some people who have, they, it takes them a minute to respond, but when they do, you can see there's some sort of shift. We're starting to learn to appreciate one another a little bit more. And I want to give a quick example on that. Um, I was out, <laughs> out doing my little walk and I'm coming back and there was um, this guy outside of my apartment complex because we have like like sprawling green little hills and things. And he's outside working out because you know, gyms are closed. He looked like a military guy. So he probably, he's still expected to be in shape for his job, but he can't go to a gym. So he's outside, he's doing his whole thing. And me, um, having always been like the chubby wallflower, <laughs> hang with me, I'm going somewhere with this, being the chubby wallflower who would have always been kind of bullied by guys like that, I found myself, this is where we have to do the self-check-in. That's the whole message here, do the self-check-in. I found myself going, just irritated. There he is. Ugh. Right? And I stopped and I caught myself and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm a grown adult, okay? And whatever has happened in my story in the past does not need to define me now. <laughs> like, you're grown, okay? You're grown. Nothing's going to take a piece of my soul. The soul is divine and perfect. What am I doing? This is cool. This guy is actually being really resourceful right now. Good on him. And as I shifted, he suddenly noticed me. He looked up and he was so adorable. He was like, hey there, how are you? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, he's, he's like chipper. Okay, like, <laughs> like, I don't know. But that was challenging my notion that this big buff military guy, of course he's going to be a jerk. Of course he is, right? And that's not correct. He's a sweetheart. And I think he, um, <laughs> I think he lives underneath me, actually. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I saw him kind of going in that direction. But you know, just stuff like that where we're catching ourselves being judgmental because we're afraid of the pain. We're afraid of the rejection. This is a time where we're realizing even if someone does reject me, who cares? Like even if you know, something comes up to the surface and it hurts for a minute, it doesn't mean that I can't handle it. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is what a lot of what we're learning right now is turning this around and catching ourselves, making sure that we're processing any pain that comes up and uh, not letting it get us into that state where we can be fed upon. Okay. Uh, another quick example here, Facebook. I know I got on Facebook and I made a comment about something here in my town and there were two people who just started to get verbally abusive and I caught myself going, wait, what are you talking about? Because I'm always wanting to understand why do people behave the way they do? Why am I like the only one that sees things like that? Like what? So anyway, <laughs> I found myself going down that road and the one woman really, really started to get abusive. And I suddenly went, oh, this isn't my problem. And I commented back, I've never done this before, not really, not in this blatant away and I and I wrote back I was like I have nothing but love for you and I didn't just do it as a way to shut down the conversation that wasn't the intent necessarily I didn't say that so that I looked more spiritual or so that I looked like a bigger better person I did it because I meant it now there are some people out there you know because I have asked people to be careful when um because there is, that can get a little tricky. Like if you're in a situation where someone is being abusive, it's, it was okay for me to send love to that person. But if somebody else had come in and commented, okay, all, all this, Michelle, this person just needs love. <sighs> okay. I'm on the other side of the negativity. Why are you sending, can I have some of that? <laughs> like, hello, you know, don't forget the other people, right? Love to everybody, right? So I hope that makes sense. I know this gets in the weeds a little bit and it could get a little like, but we got to train our brains to start understanding the nuances of life. All right, so I'm going to use the Magdalene Oracle. And when I go back and edit, I will see if there's anything that I can do to kind of shorten the video a little bit. But I, you know, I like to take some time to give examples. I know people get very impatient with that, but that's one of the things that we got to learn okay I mean messengers have to give examples right that's that's how we 
get the point across. That's how we get the energy down. And if I know we're in an age of immediacy. And so people are always like, oh, just get to the point. <sighs> Why? You won't understand the point. If I jump from here to there, you ain't going to get it. Now you want to come on the journey with me? Let's start from the beginning, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I put them in there. Okay. So let's use this Magdalene Oracle and see what else is coming up. Yeah, hate is not our reality. Greed is not what needs to be going forward. You know what I'm saying? Like we have the power right now. There is a huge opportunity to shift we had the opportunity in 2012 we didn't take it didn't take it it got people into a lot of spiritual narcissism who knew that could be a thing until it happened right all right so we have uh sacred sexuality here and this to me i mean you can take this in a personal way whatever works for you but this is uh <laughs> So your creative life force and creating the existence that you want. But it goes deeper than that. I'm going to set this aside here. It goes deeper than that. Because a lot of what is feeding darkness is the manipulation of sexual energy. You know what I'm talking about. I, I think every single human being out there well, maybe not, not every single human being, but at some point in our lives, especially if you're female, maybe you've experienced this, um, where there are expectations put upon you. Um, there is this diminishment of you, your body, the way your body looks, um, the things that are comfortable for you getting diminished. Why? So you feel bad. Low frequency feeding time. Not enough people, this is our, our chance, this is good news, okay? Not enough people have ever given themselves a chance to feel the purity and the power of their own sexual energy. They keep saying it, it's gotten violated. It's gotten violated. So this is a call for us to start taking that energy more seriously and i i know my whole my whole existence has been about taking my power back in that way and i know i've gotten in with some dark people i have gotten in with some like dark situations where i got there and i'm like i'm terrified and i don't know how to get out and i don't have enough left of me to stand up for myself in this situation and so a violation occurs because I, I got scared into shock almost. And that's, you know, that's how it happened for me. And that comes from past uh, experiences and past conditioning. But when I started to regain myself and going, oh my gosh, that was messed up. People were like, oh, People, people were supposed to love and care about me, <laughs> right? Um, that I tried to express this to and tried to open up to. Oh, you're just always making yourself the victim. Oh, you're such a victim. Oh my God. It's no big deal. Everybody does that. Violation in a sexual manner is so much more prevalent than anybody I think realizes. And I think we are getting freed from that now. Yeah, we're turning that around. The word sacred on here. There's a sacredness to this. And we get to have it back. And this is not, I mean, if you were in a space where you are still trying to heal from certain things that maybe occurred, great. Make sure you're getting all proper help, okay? Um, and be careful about going to people who... Um, and I want to I want to do a little PSA here. Um, be careful about spiritual practitioners who claim that they do sexual healing. That's not. I mean, there there are some good ones out there. What I'm saying is, make sure you're being discerning and listening to your instincts, because a lot of people who have been sexually abused or sexually violated, they will go into a situation, and all, and all it takes is for someone to say, "No, this is normal." So you can end up getting with a, a supposed practitioner 
who is just in there to steal your energy. Michelle, you're fear-mongering. Don't try me. Have you not realized who you're dealing with yet? Hi. And it's only going to get bigger. <laughs> because we are reclaiming ourselves. This light is only going to get bigger if you can't handle it. I, I see you. All right? I see you. I know people track. I know they do. It's not lost on me. I have met... Well, I didn't meet this person in person. This was like an online conversation. And um, I was trying to network and thinking like, okay, I can get with other spiritual practitioners. And I started this conversation with this person who is actually in this, supposed to be in the sexual healing arts, esoteric arts. I'm not going to get into what she said to me. I've shared it with a couple of people, but I'm not going to get into what she said to me. But I was like... Oh my gosh, you're literally posing as a practitioner so that you can violate people. It does happen and you will be stopped. Or if you know somebody like that, go tell them the news. We're here. The trumpets are sounding. I don't think it's actually going to look like that, but whatever. Okay, <laughs> like the light is here and they will be exposed or... People will suddenly feel, because we are awakening a little bit more, like something doesn't feel right and they trust that and they move away from that person. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here. I don't even need to explain this. Your guardian angel is here on deck, <laughs> right? Um, a lot of us actually have more angels around us right now. So um, we're all human. Nobody knows the end all be all rules about angels or the beings that we call angels uh, necessarily. We just have what we are interpreting right now with our capacity that we have right now. The way that I have understood it <laughs> thus far is that typically I feel a lot of people are born in with um, like a set of guardians, right? So guardian angels um, coming in to watch over us. Please do not worry about their name. I know words have a frequency. Um, but people get really obsessed over what their angel's name is. You can easily go into meditation and ask. Sometimes you'll hear a name right away. Other times you might hear your angel say, name me. Because they don't need a name. We need names. We humans need labels and genders and duality. And <laughs> that's us, okay? And they are here just to love and protect. And it is uh, important to make it clear that your guardian angels uh, are not here to live for you. I was, you know, was I talking about personal readings in this one? Uh, you know, sometimes people will come for personal readings and they're like, just tell me what to do. Angels cannot interfere with your free will. It's God's law. Because the whole point of you being here is to remember that you are a creative life force yourself. And that you're going through the journey of reclaiming your creative powers. Now, when we say powers, humans tend to use that in a very egotistical kind of way. <laughs> but anyway, if we're coming from the heart space, then we're good. We're kind of covered. We, we have a good instinct about that, right? But now we have a lot of extra a lot of extra help coming on in. And so you might have more guardian angels around you. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And for some of us, um, there, there would be uh, maybe a guardian angel that comes in and helps with sexual healing because those, those two cards came out one right after the other. I feel the need all of a sudden to say, if you don't believe in this stuff, it's okay. Okay. You don't, I'm going to use words like angels, but as long as you're getting something positive out of watching this video, and by positive, I don't mean something for you to laugh at, because now you're either part of the darkness or you're feeding the darkness, okay? So you decide what, where do you want to land? It's up to you. Um, but even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, as long as you, whatever, whatever your interpretation of this message is, as long as you're feeling love, you're feeling the transfer of love, cool okay <laughs> right so <laughs> all right we have Gaia and I'm actually recording this on Earth Day so happy Earth Day you guys probably it'll be past Earth Day by the time I get this edited and loaded um <laughs> but Gaia Gaia is healing however there is a message that has been coming up that I want to share with you guys and that is I know with how we're experiencing things right now from a human perspective this might be a day two concern I don't know 
but there's going to be a lot of chemicals going into the water supply. I'm telling you that right now. Be careful with your water supply, okay, and making sure you have good clean water. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, because we have tons of bleach going into the water supply now, um, chemicals, cleaning chemicals, uh, people are leaving rubber gloves everywhere. Where do you think that stuff is going? We're having to use, disp and again, like, how do you get around it? I don't have the solution. Sorry to be the person that presented the problem with no solution. I didn't mean to, but, <laughs> but it's something to think about. You know, the PPE that everybody is using in the healthcare field, you know, every time they go, I don't know how they're doing it now, but it's my understanding that, you know, those are disposable. You just toss them away. So there, although Gaia is healing, there's going to be another round of considerations that occur later on where it's like, oh man, here's the fallout from the, you know, from what we all experienced. Does that make sense? I, I'm not telling you that so you worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. But it's going to be another thing that we will have to think about. Okay. So there's that mythic reality. Oh my gosh. Oh man. You guys ready? I'm sorry. It's like the longest video ever. Um, look at this. It's like a sepia toned. This, this is what you've been told is the end all be all. This is, this is the goal. This is what you want to be. And yet it's dingy and it's filled with, you know, a, a darker, forgive the language here, dark light. What, it's what we have for words. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're, we have been on the train. Cause you see, this almost looks like train tracks in there. Um, uh, to this, what, sorry, <laughs> what I'm going to say, what, which looks like a dark castle, but we're being told, no, this is great. This is a blessing. This is, this is what you want, right? This would be that kind of thing where you think your life is more valid because you followed all the rules kind of thing. And you realize it was a trap. The train is taking us to the dark castle that has a, a phony rainbow over the top of it. This is it. This is it. Where do you want to land? Do you want to keep giving into the conditioning? Or do you want to find the true blessing? Well, I want to find the true blessing. Of course I do. Well, then you need to let go of what you've been told. It's not easy. I think a lot of us are going to be struggling with that. Okay. All right. So let's get a color card here. Do not be lulled by falsehoods. And we've been talking for a long time. You know, we humans, we're always trying to correct things and we always kind of pendulum swing back the other way and overcorrect. This is where, um, you know, in the want for healing, people started to police one another. You can't say that. You can't think that. You can't be out here without a mask. You can't be out here with a mask. That ain't it. <laughs> you know, again, it's pretty simple. Doesn't it feel good to be loving? And I'm not talking like fake. If someone's, you know, tune into your instincts. If someone is carrying a lot of dark energy... Okay, uh, hi, hey, I'm going to go this way, you know, kind of thing. But on the whole, we can help each other remember what it is to be loving. All right. Whoa, that was like a magic trick. I don't know if that picked up on, oh, I bet it didn't. I bet it was out of frame. Two cards were kind of like floating in the air first. <laughs> I swear it was really weird. And then they kind of landed. It was me tossing it, but it was just kind of like, it took a minute. Okay, so what do we have here? More earth stuff. How interesting is this? So we have brown established boundaries. The number is 12. And brilliance, discover your sparkle. The number is 26. So this is actually how we find our way back. So we stop accepting what we're being told. Now, this isn't so that you start playing, you know, I suspect everything's a lie kind of thing. But critical thinking, hi. <laughs> and whatever the critical thinking equivalent of being in your heart space would be, that's where you need to be, okay? So you're establishing those boundaries. You're not taking everything at face value. Um, but don't, don't get into this antagonistic kind of thing either. Again, it's that overcorrecting where people are always trying 
you know, they want to do the right thing, but they didn't come in with all the information. I remember, I gave this example a long time ago. I was on the subway and this woman came barreling into the subway car and she was shoving everybody and she got to me and I was like, don't. I established a boundary and I said no, which was not easy for me. You all think that I'm this like rough and tumble, sassy, feisty person. That has been hard won. And that has been from being the quiet, shy, introverted person who would get her neck stepped on. I'm not a victim, but <laughs> that's how I just didn't understand people. And I didn't understand why people were so mean to one another and, and all this. And it was really, honestly, when I, I think when I moved to Los Angeles, that's where I started to learn, I need to stand up for myself. It wasn't perfect. New York, it got even bigger, but I was on the subway and this woman coming on, I set a boundary as soon as the train opened up. She got off the the subway car with me, followed me, came up behind me, and punched me in the shoulder. Punched me in the shoulder and had stitches in my shoulder at the time. And I about came to my knees and I'm like, I, I just turned around and looked at her. I'm like, what are you doing? And she starts to come at me again. And I had my hands up and I'm just kind of like, you know, keeping her away from me. She looks over at a guy who's looking at us, trying to, she can tell that he, she, he's trying to figure out what's going on here. And she just goes, oh my God. She starts playing the victim and acting like she fell back and, and like she fell into the stairwell. And, you know, the guy thought he was being a hero and started coming at me and saying, what are you doing? Who the, you know, who do you think you are? What are you, you can't treat people like that. And I was like, you are such a fool. <laughs> like, that is not what just happened. Oh my gosh, are you serious? You're really going to get... But see, that's how easy it is to brainwash anybody. Literally, just because he didn't see her punch me first, he assumed that what she was saying was true, even though she was a bad actress. I don't... <laughs> I don't know. And I was standing there stunned. Like, I, this whole thing is so stupid. But that's an example of people, you know, be careful when if you want to jump in and help. Get all the information first. All right, get the information first. So that's establishing boundaries and um, discovering your sparkle here. The brilliance is us finding our light again, finding our way back to that love and letting, letting the emotions kind of flow away, letting ourselves be cleansed and cleared, learning from the things that have gone past that story I just gave you. I couldn't tell that story for the longest because it, it still um, made me feel afraid. Because in that moment, I was very afraid. I was trying to like be tough and like, you know, <laughs> but you know, that was just a defense mechanism. I was actually quite terrified and it would get my adrenaline going again. And now I'm just like, that fool, like this, this whole foolish situation, like, uh, -uh. um, <laughs> like it's, it's a very different response when I think of it now. So we can learn from our past, but we don't need to let it still have a trauma response within us, which is the kind of energy that would feed entities that we don't want to feed or people that we don't want to feed. So that is going to release us. That's part of the freedom. And that is the message for this week, guys. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.